What is up, everybody? It's Brown Guy 420 here. We got ourselves another daily grind episode, <clears throat> and today, as you see, there's no more greenhouse. We're moving plants. These girls are looking all pretty good. A couple here and there that are, may end up getting tossed. We're gonna dig through these, try to find some males, get rid of them males. But they're pretty healthy, looking pretty good. So. What we're doing is the guys are bringing in the trailer. I'm gonna go through this. Here's our other side of our tent. We keep finding these annoying little spittle bugs everywhere. So if I can spot one really quick. There we are, that's that spit look. See that? So I'm gonna go ahead and be spraying these <clears throat> all with a little bit of soap because these spittle bugs are a lot like aphids and the insecticidal type soaps or just dish soap that's non-scented, non-bleached uh, will work just fine. So that's what we're going to do is spray them down with a little bit of soap, kill all these little spittle bugs as we transfer everything down to the field. Got to stay compliant so we're going to be achieving that license in the next uh, couple days we just got to go up to Portland and go get it so once we get that license in hand we have to be compliant and part of that is making sure all our plants are down on the field so all right guys we're gonna get to work move some plants Here we are at the greenhouse place picking up more gear for the greenhouses. Looks like we got the other three heaters we need. Parts and pieces. Brackets, all that good stuff. We got louver brackets. Probably some other kind of brackets. Some more poles, sidewalls. Things are looking good. Looks like some controllers. Not too bad. And here's the uh, blackout fins to keep light from coming into the greenhouse, but allows air. They kind of do an S curve through here so that you can't see light on the other side. Holy smoke. with the wee little bitty work lift. Tiny little guy, but it puts in work. <laughs> All right guys, we made it back to the farm. Truck full of boxes, trailer full of gear. This is a bunch of our inside fans, our propane heaters, our controllers, plastic. On the other side, we have our light depth rolls and our end wall light depth fabrics. 
That's all right here. That's for the end walls. We have all of our louvers right over here. That's these skinny boxes. Uh, more of them all throughout here. And then hardware and the mini fans and everything like that. That's going to be, uh, you know, insulating or filling in that double layer on our polycarbonate there. So, all right, guys, time to unload this truck and call the weekend. All right. Okay guys, so today we're feeding our girls and what we're gonna do is show you how we do it. So we got ourselves a 44 gallon trash can. It's obviously not filled up to the very top. We still have a little bit of room. So I'm gonna add about 30 to 35 gallons worth of mix to all this so that we're uh, probably just under the recommended uses, but I, I tend to water a little bit lighter than what is recommended all the time. So. I have one tablespoon of powdered aloe, and the aloe is about one eighth teaspoon per gallon. So that right there should be about 24 gallons. So we're gonna do another, like a teaspoon now, instead of a tablespoon. So there's about 32 gallons. And I might add just a just a scotch more. And there we go. And that's about 35-ish gallons. So one eighth teaspoon per gallon. All right. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be coming in with the coconut. If I can have D be my other second second pair of hands and this is one tablespoon per gallon or per five gallons my bad so one tablespoon coconut powdered coconut per five gallons so there's five ten Fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. We're going to go ahead and do 
about a half to get into that 30 to 35 area and we're all good. Go ahead and rinse this off, get it all cleaned up for next time. You don't want to rinse this off while you're in the middle of doing those powders because if you rinse this off after the aloe, you're going to have it all wet and you're going to introduce moisture into your freeze-dried aloes and coconuts and what that's going to do is cause it to clump up and get really hard and then from there it's not really too usable. So make sure you rinse this off or or you have two of these, one for aloe and then you can rinse it off and one for coconut and then you can rinse it off when you're done. But if you only have one, then just rinse it off at the end so you're not introducing moisture. These come in moisture uh, bags that will help keep the moisture out. They seal up. You want to keep them in that or like a Ziploc baggie or something that seals, a jar, anything that seals up and doesn't allow a lot of moisture to get into your bag or else it will ruin it. So, all right guys, next thing would be our Protect Silica. And we're gonna go ahead and do this at about four mils a gallon. So uh, for 120 milliliters, which is almost this thing full. That was 120 milliliters of Protect Silica. And then the next thing we're going to be using is a little bit of full power. And this says to use at about 30 mils per gallon. I only use it at 10. So uh, 30 gallons is about 300 milliliters. So this is a 150 milliliter or 5 ounce shot glass. As to that, we're going to go ahead and do one more. And we're at our 300 mark. All right. Now we're going to let our bubbler bubble that up. Let it mix it up. We'll get in here, stir it around. Let it sit for about 5 or 10 minutes. And uh, it's time to water. All right, guys. Okay guys, so out of all the keepers, here they are. They might be a little bit beat up. We uh, stripped them down, took off a lot of fan leaf sites, all that stuff, left a few minimal amounts. But uh, tomorrow they should be a little bit more perkier, not so beat up from transportation. But everything's looking pretty good guys. So we have all of our keepers all here inside the greenhouse on the grow property so this is what's going to keep us in compliance we have cameras all around this property tomorrow or actually tomorrow I go pick up our license in Portland which makes us official very official and then Wednesday we will put our other greenhouse right up to this one, just like we had it up there with the stove in the middle. And we're only going to put about a, <clears throat> a thousand water up in here and a thousand water on this side, run it with a generator and uh, only keep those lights on to extend the day. Um, we're going to be pulling, I don't know if you want to call it a light depth, but we're just going to be putting black plastic over these things so that they don't emit light out into the middle of the night so it doesn't you know mess with the neighbors or anything like that so uh a lot of work still to do but uh part of keeping compliant 
is making sure that everything's on camera. So if anything comes in this tent or out of this tent, we got cameras. There's some right there that watch every little move that you do. Now, part of getting your license is getting approved that we that we got. We got our approval. Now we go pay for our license, which we're gonna do tomorrow, and then move our plants onto the property, which is the next step. And then here in the next week or two, we'll be allowed to download the seed the sale program uh, uh, software, which is called the matrix. And once we get our matrix up and loaded, we're allowed to order tags. So as of right now, we don't need the tags because we're not eligible to buy the tags yet. But once we're able to buy the tags, then we could tag all these plants and they're part of the system. So that's the next thing going on guys. So tomorrow is a Portland day. We're gonna go get our license guys. And then we're gonna get all these plants to, the, they have all this room. So we've been stripping them. So that's why they're looking skinny, slightly feeble. They've been beat up by driving on in the back of the quad. But here in the next week or so, they're just gonna explode with all this light that they're getting now. So uh, stay tuned guys. Like I said, license is tomorrow and we go legit. So all right guys, there we are. We moved one greenhouse today. Looking good. Looking really good. All right. What's up guys? Here we are back in the office as always. And uh, it's been a busy week so far. We've been moving in extra greenhouse gear, our heaters, our louvers, our HAF fans, which are the inside fans that blow around and keep circulation going inside the greenhouse. Uh, heavy, heavy, heavy rolls of plastic. <laughs> we unloaded it all, the three of us. Uh, now having our boy Sticky with us is uh, really good. He's a really hard worker. He actually worked harder than the last guy. So uh, much props to him because uh, he's working his butt off and uh, it, it shows with how much we're getting done. So. He's meshing in perfectly with the team, guys, and uh, we couldn't be any happier. You know, and, and a quick touch on, before we get into everything, uh, you know, when it comes to running a business, guys, if you're taking notes trying to do this for a future farm of yours or anything like that, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, just touch really quickly that, you know, you're going to hire some people that you think are going to last a long time. You're going to hire a, an old friend or anything like that. And things may not always go right, you know. Um, someone may become insubordinate or anything like that. So um, you need to be a strong person when it comes to running a company. Uh, because the minute that somebody's not happy, they're going to leave. And they're going to want to, uh, they're going to be very sour towards you. Thinking that they didn't get treated right or not respected right or whatever like that. Don't let it hurt your spirits. It's part of building a company. Not everyone's going to like the way you're trying to build something. Um, it takes a tough person, you know, a hard person to, to run everything. You know, it, it, uh, you're going you're gonna to have your heart broken by a guy that you, you really liked and you really thought you had a lot into him or an old friend. And all of a sudden he wants to, you know, turn you in over stupid little tiny things, you know. And, you know, so, uh, you know. When it comes to running a company, guys, you, you must realize that there's a lot that goes on in the background. If you're the one leading the, the show, you're going to have to do paperwork. You're going to have to do billing stuff. You're going to have to be out there on the garden. You're going to have to move stuff. And maybe some people that you're working with won't like it if you're down on the field, and then you have to come up to do paperwork, and you leave them on the field. It's part of being the boss. If that person doesn't like you doing that, leaving, thinking that you're leaving them with the work, they're not fit to be someone who's a leader. A leader has to do everything. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. So uh, just my advice to anyone starting, wanting to start a company is be strong. If you gotta get rid of a few people, you know what, cleaning house always works. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where sometimes it's just not best to hire your friends, you know. Uh, I do got my boy D who's, who's not really a friend, he's more like a brother to me. And uh, that guy is a ride or die guy. He will always be here. Same thing with my compliance lady from West Coast Bay Goodness. The three of us are a trifecta. We will we will die for solo. You know, we will never leave this. This is our life. This is our security, and this is our dream. And this is something that we're wanting to develop so that we can pass it on to our kids and 
everything like that, you know, this is, this is something, this is bigger for us than anything else, you know. When it comes to bringing on new employees, you may you win some, you may lose some, you never know, I don't know. Uh, you may let them know too much about the company and then uh, they want to leave and go start another farm with someone else or something like that. So, um, you know, when it comes to things and people, uh, you know, sometimes running a business is harder than you think. So just have a strong heart and a strong soul and you can succeed in all of your dreams. Just know that sometimes the people you think that are following you may not necessarily follow you fully till the end, you know, but then you have certain people that you know will follow you to the very end and some, you know, if this all falls apart, I know that my compliance lady and my boy D, we're all going to put our heads together and figure out another way to get things going, you know, so that's just the way we are, we're ride or die when it comes like that, so um, <clears throat> other than that guys, we've done a lot of moving, we're trying to keep compliant. Uh, you know, some people may say that, you know, because I have plants back here, I'm not compliant right now. You know, yes, I am. I don't have the license yet. We're actually getting it tomorrow. So that's why we're moving plants down. We're doing that. And then, and someone may say, oh, you don't got plant tags. You're, you're totally illegal and you're doing this the wrong way. Well, there's a process guys. So the OLCC is going to look at it as we don't have our plants tagged yet because we're not eligible to have our plant tags yet. You know, we got to get the metric system going, and from the metric system going, you're allowed to order your plant tags. Once you order your plant tags, then you, you, you populate them into your system, into your seed to sale, the metric system, and then you go tag your plants. So until you're eligible to be purchasing these tags and putting them on your plants, you can't really do anything except for move your plants down there put a camera inside that our, our greenhouse that we got down there, the Amazon greenhouses that we moved down there, and uh, you just got to go with as compliant as you can be until the state gives you the other necessities to run full compliance. Uh, just because you don't see it on the farm right now doesn't mean we're not in compliance. It means we're getting into compliance. We're a starting farm. We have a 90-day grace period to, to get strains on our farm, to get plants on our farm, to get everything set up right. When it comes to that greenhouse down there, those Amazon greenhouses, I wire up a camera tomorrow, I put it up inside that thing, I, I take a picture, I take a snapshot of the DVR of what my camera is watching, and we send it to the OLCC, and then they're going to send an inspector out, he's going to check it out and be like, okay, this looks good, and he passes you, and you go on, you know, so on and so forth, and you just keep doing your job. So, uh... Like I said, there's a lot of people out there who are going to try to call you out. You know, they're going to be mean. They're going to call you out and, oh, you're not doing anything right and I'm going to tell on you. Well, they don't know the rules fully, you know. So you're going to have to make those decisions as a boss on your own. You're going to have to call the OLCC or whatever state that you're in. You're going to have to, you know, ask those questions. Well, what do I do about tags now that I'm, you know, a registered recreational marijuana producer? How do I get those tags? Where, where do I stand in line? Where do I, who do I pay to get my tags? Where do I get my metric system? You know, and this, and, and they'll tell you everything. They'll tell you, okay, you're okay right now. You're okay. You know, uh, come pay for your license, get that. And then we'll open up the metric system to you and get that. And then from there, once you sign up and you get all your users in, in, installed into this program, then you guys can mess with getting tags. It's going to take a week or maybe maybe a week and a half to get your tags. Once you get your tags, you're going to populate them into the system, you're going to tag them the strains, and you're going to go ahead and put them into your system, and then you're fully compliant. Until then, the OLCC isn't a bunch of martyrs. <laughs> they're, they're, they're trying to help you. So if you don't think you're going to be in compliance, just call them. Just ask them. You know? And they're, they're more than willing to help you. And if your state's recreational, just call them. Don't be afraid of that. Just call them and they'll tell you what's right and what's wrong. Even though somebody may call you out, you can know that they're wrong and you're right because you called the proper people. Don't let somebody run their mouth and get you afraid that you're not doing things right. If you're contacting the direct officials and they're telling you you're doing everything right, then you're doing everything right. <laughs> Catch my drift? So, um... Other things have happened. We uh, we checked out some uh, blueprints that we're trying to get all scheduled out for a drying facility, our office, a little bit of storage, uh, where we're going to trim at, 
and do everything like that. It's a 30 foot long by, uh, or 30 foot deep by 50 foot long building. And it's going to be pretty sweet. You guys are going to see the blueprints right now, uh, or the at least the rough, you know, sketch of the, what they are. And uh, here pretty soon, hopefully, we can start uh, getting things like that taken care of, start building it up. But uh, let it be known that, you know, when you're doing it the right way, permits take time. It's 120 days just for the paperwork to go through before I can even start building that facility. So it's, uh, it's all a waiting game, guys. Next thing up is getting our greenhouses situated to where they can uh, be installed. Tomorrow I have a contractor showing up. He's going to go over everything about the footers and everything that needs to be done. And then uh, we're going to get him started. We got our permit. Our permits, they're going to be going through by next week. So I told him by the following week, I need him here. We're going to get footers laid and we're going to start these greenhouses up, guys. And then hopefully soon, I can have my plants in a controlled environment and we can be really growing some cannabis, guys. So uh, a lot of good things are coming. You know, We have three greenhouses and another one after that coming really soon. We've got uh, 120, 400 gallon pots coming from our boys at Grassroot Pots. We're gonna have an amazing outdoor. Uh, maybe not the biggest of monsters, but they're gonna be pretty big. <laughs> so uh, we got a lot of things in store for you guys. Uh, the season is almost here. We're ready, we're excited. We're, we're ready to grab this bull by the horns and show you guys what Solo's got, you know? so. Uh, when it comes to the dark plasmas, they're just about cured up and dried, and then we're going to go ahead and buck those off, maybe tomorrow, and we're going to get them in jars, and we're going to get them curing out properly, and uh, then we'll do a bud review, show you guys that, so that's coming soon. Um, other than that, it's just more hard work. Tomorrow we're going to finish moving everything down on the field, because tomorrow's the day we are officially a recreational farm, and uh, once we get everything down there, we're going to be fully compliant, and we're ready to rock and roll. The following day, we got some more supplies to get from the greenhouse people. Uh, that'll be our, our Thursday. And then uh, hopefully Friday, we're, we're kicking back, not working as hard that, as, as we have this week. And we're just buttoning things up on Friday and then calling it a nice weekend. So uh, a lot in store, guys. A lot in store. We got the outdoor going. We got the greenhouse getting ready to pop off. We got everything ready to go. Uh, my biggest thing that I want in is greenhouses and electrical. Once we get those permits, it's gung-ho, let's get it done, you know? So we can move everything into these big, brand new, beautiful greenhouses and start growing like we used to, like the way we did, the beautiful ways that we did. So uh, all in due time, guys, we're almost there. So uh, with that said, I think we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. And uh, I hope you guys like the show. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And as always, guys, this is BrownGuy420, and I'm out of here. Peace.